Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to solve some basic differential equations called linear differential equations or linear ODEs. I'm going to step you through an example and I've just discussed the, 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 the uh, main ideas along the way. So let me share my screen with you. All right, so here we are given an equation called a differ differential equation. It's a linear differential equation. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. And we're also given a bit of extra information called an initial condition. Now, with the differential equation, what we're trying to do is solve uh, the, the equation for the unknown function y, whose derivative, in this case, minus itself, equals e to the 3x. So we want to find a function y. When we take that function away from its derivative, we are left with e to the 3x. And this extra bit of information over here tells us that when x equals 0, the function from here, y, has to also equal 0. So this is known as an ODE, ordinary differential equation. And this is known as an initial condition, or I call IC. Now you'll notice that the font is massive in this um, uh, on the page. What I'm trying to do is improve my um, uh, visibility on mobile devices. So if you're watching on a mobile device, let me know what your experience is like. Okay, so here we are. We're going to solve this problem first, and then we'll incorporate this extra bit of information a little later. Now, our ODE is of a special form. Okay, it's of the following form. Dy dx plus P of x times y equals Q of x, and this is the general linear form. P of x and Q of x are, say, um, uh, given functions. In this ex example, P of x would just be the constant function negative 1, and Q would be e to the 3x. And for this general form, we call an ODE linear. Now, it's important to identify whether or not a given problem is linear because that um, will tell us what technique to use. So even before we've solved the problem, we need to know how to solve the problem, of course, and that comes down to classifying uh, what kind of problem you're dealing with. Okay, so... For linear problems, what we do is we actually use a special, almost magic function that we multiply both sides of the differential equation by. And this magic function is called an integrating factor. And you, and you um, come up with the integrating factor through the coefficient function of y, the p of x. Okay? All right. So... Let's just write down our conclusion. So is linear, a linear ODE. All right. Okay. So let's consider the following. I'm going to introduce a function, V, which is going to be this magic function, the integrating factor. And it's going to be e to the integral p dx. Now, you might want to put p of x there. I've just put p to save a bit of space. So our p of x, the coefficient, is negative 1. So if I integrate this, I will get e to the negative x. Okay? Now, I don't, I don't need a constant of integration there. If you really feel strongly about it, you can put one in. All right, 
So what we're going to do with this magic function is multiply both sides of our original differential equation by that magic function, that integrating factor. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go. Let's take this e to the negative x, multiply both sides over here and both sides over uh, on this and over here with, by e to the negative x. Okay. Now the good question is, why would you want to do that? Well, it'll become clear in a minute. So multiply both sides of our ODE by V to obtain the following. Now, okay, V equals E to the negative X. So I'm going to get E to the negative X here minus E to the negative X there and multiply this by E to the ne negative X will give us E to the 2X, okay? All right, all right, so now you might think, well, hang on, this looks very messy indeed. What What is going on here? Well, this technique allows us, by multiplying through by this magic function, this integrating factor, it allows us to compress the left-hand side down to the derivative of a special product, okay? Let me say that again. The left-hand side of the bottom line is going to be compressed to the derivative of a special product. Now that special product is going to include the unknown function y and the magic function, the integrating factor, that, that in this case e to the negative x. So let me show, share that with you. Okay, now if you look closely at this, this is actually the derivative of the special product that I was telling you about just before. Okay, so we have the following left hand side is the derivative of this okay now you might go well hang on how did you go from here to here well actually you can kind of work backwards here if y is a function of x and you differentiate this by the product rule we're going to get this left-hand side. So let me just sort of justify this to you quickly. Okay, it's a product rule, so it's d dx of y times e to the x plus d dx of e to the negative x times y. So it's, uh, yep, d dx of y, well, that's just, we don't know what y is, but it's just dy dx. Uh, plus y times d dx of e to the negative x. Okay, d dx of e to the negative x, the negative one comes to the front. So that'll be a minus. Okay, now this and this are exactly the same. Okay, that's just, just switched around. All right, so what I've tried to, here I've been using the product rule, for differentiation. All right, so another important thing here is whatever the integrating factor is for different problems, you'll always get this, this left-hand side will always compress to the derivative of the unknown function y times v, whatever v is. Okay, so let's move on from star then. Okay, let me uh, start a new page. All right, so what, I, what can I do now? Well, I've got the derivative of the unknown function times that I can integrate both sides and I can get that y out, okay? So we're going to integrate 
both sides of star with respect to x to form the following. Yeah. Now we know integration and differentiation are the opposites of e of the of each other, so that will disappear. When I integrate this, I'll um, I'll get e to the two x times one half, and I'll put a constant of integration in. So that is the integration on the left hand side, and I'll put a constant of integration in, say c where c equals a constant. All right, so now let's re re rearrange this and make y the subject, OK? Thus, we're almost finished now. So let's um, divide both sides by e to the x, which is the same as multiplying by e to the x. So I get the following. So I multiply both sides by e to the x, I'll get this, plus c, e to the x. All right. So we've now spent a fair bit of time getting that general solution. OK, so um, with these kinds of linear problems, you're always going to find an integrating factor. Multiply the left-hand side, well, both sides by that integrating factor and compress the left-hand side down to the derivative of a special product involving the unknown function and the integrating factor. All right, we're not quite done yet. What about that C in the general solution? All right, let's find that C. We have spent a lot of time using this equation, but we haven't used this at all. So this initial condition is going to be used to refine the value of C in this general solution, OK? So what this initial condition says is that when x equals 0, our function y should also equal 0, OK? So let's get a value for that c using the initial condition, OK? This is known as a general solution. Now, y of 0 equals 0 gives the following. Okay, let's replace y with 0 and x with 0 in here. So e to the 0 plus c e to the 0. e to the 0 is just 1. So let's rearrange and make c the subject. Okay, so that'll go to the other side and I'll get c equals uh, negative 1 half. OK, let's put it all together now. We're going to replace the c in our general solution with negative 1 half. Hence, There it is. There's our solution to our original problem. OK? Took us a while, but we got there. Now, how do I know that the, the, the function that I've come up with is actually the correct function? How do I know? How can I check that it's right? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. We can take this function and test it. We can calculate its derivative and then take the, the function y away from the derivative and see if we get e to the 3x. If we do, then it definitely satisfies this problem. If we don't, then it's not a solution. We can also take x equals 0, plug it in here. Do we get 0? Well, if you do those, you'll see that this is satisfied and this is satisfied. OK, so that is a linear ODE solved um, in fairly um, detailed form.
Okay, let's just run through the, the arguments one more time. First of all, we identified that our ODE was of a special form. This form here, and with, with, with uh, in this case, p of x was negative one, and q of x was this, and so it's linear. Then we formed a magic function called an integrating factor from this p function, e to the integral p. We then multiplied both sides of our ODE by this this special function to form this, and compressed this left hand side down to the derivative of a special product involving the unknown function y and this magic function, the integrating factor. Okay, and that was just, just you can justify that using the product rule. Then we integrated both sides and, in, and um, got a general solution and then used the initial condition. Now, as some of you are probably thinking, Chris, that is a lot of work there. Do I have to do that every time? And the answer is no. Okay, let me show you what's important. Sometimes I write more than what's necessary because I'm explaining it as I go along. So let me show you what, what I would uh, do, in an, say, in an exam if I was doing the exam. Okay. First of all, I recognise that the definitely that this is linear. I would spend a little some time doing this, but I wouldn't actually write down this. I would go straight to this step. Okay, and then integrate both sides. All right, I wouldn't worry about all the other stuff that I've written down. That's just to explain it and justify it to you. Okay. Okay. So, what do you think? Linear differential equations—they are absolutely awesome. They're found in lots of simple models for um, trying to describe the world around us. They're, they're amazing, and it's just an idea from calculus involving the product rule. How simple is that? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this presentation. I uh, hope you um, are learning things. And um, if you have any requests, any special um, uh, videos that you'd like me to do, I'm, I'm always open to suggestions. Post them in the comments section. And hope you can join me in the future for more uh, live streamed maths videos. All right, bye everyone.